make your way into a comfortable cross-legged position. If you want to take a block underneath your seat, you can feel free to do that. Otherwise, you're just going to come to a comfortable seated position. Palms up for a gesture of receiving, palms down if you feel like you need to be grounded. If there's any other funky things that you want to do with your hands, feel free to do it. Wherever you are, you're going to close down through the eyes and take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Draw the shoulders up by the ears. And then nice big open mouth exhale, just feel the shoulders fall away. One more just like that, nice deep inhale, draw the shoulders up. Big open mouth exhale. And then starting to breathe in and out through the nose. And take one hand to the heart and one hand to the belly. As you inhale, I want you to feel the hand on your chest rise. And then I want you to feel the hand on your belly rise. And then as you exhale, feel the hand on your belly sink in. And then feel the hand on your chest sink in. And see if you can keep directing the breath all the way down into your lower belly. But don't just use your abdominal muscles to press out your stomach. See if you can really use the um, diaphragm expanding to get some air into your belly. Take two more breaths here. And then you can keep your eyes closed or you can gently open them as you inhale. Sweep the arms up and overhead. And then as you exhale, take the right hand down, sweep that left arm up and over. Really ground down through the left sit bone. Maybe the right forearm can come to the floor. And you're going to open up and look out underneath that left armpit. Inhale yourself back to your center. And then as you exhale, take it over towards the other side. Grounding down through the right sit bone, opening up through the right leg. Inhale, bring yourself up through center. Get really, really long through the side bodies. Glue down through the sit bones and then start to hinge yourself forward. When you start to feel your hips want to lift, you're just going to take your hands down and then let the spine just round forward. If you can keep your sit bones grounded, you can maybe start to crawl the hands forward a little bit as the hips start to open up. That's super yoga music. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they turned it off. They were playing the Venga Boys before, which is much more, much more That's much more appropriate. We start to crawl the hands back in, and then we're just going to switch the cross of the legs. So opposite shin in front. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead, get nice and long. And then as you exhale, take yourself forward, meet your edge, and then just let yourself fold in. And as the hips start to open, you can feel free to start to walk those hands forwards a little bit more. And then from here, you're going to walk your hands back in towards you. So from here, you're just going to take your feet out in front of you and you're going to plant them about hips distance apart, maybe a little bit wider. You can have your hands down or you can have them out in front of you. We're just going to do a bit of hip mobility. So you're going to take both knees over to one side. So the sole of the foot and the knee come to meet. And then you're going to take it all the way over to the other side. And then you're just going to keep moving back and forward at your own pace. You'll probably scoot forward a little bit on your mat and that's okay. you're even on both sides you're going to come back to the center you're going to plant down through the left foot cross the right ankle over the top of the left knee if this is too much you can always lie all the way back down onto your back otherwise you're slowly going to start to walk your hands in towards your hips try and keep both hips down on the ground your right knee is pressing away from you and you're nice and active through the right foot 
it's nice and active through the arms. Don't let your neck disappear into your shoulders. Well, if you want to buy houses like at the back of town, you can't at the moment. You can't get anything under like three, four hundred thousand, <gasps> and that's like not even. No, they would consider this beachfront. That yeah. this is like beachfront. Like you go back, 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 and it's still. Wow. We're, we were looking at buying, and it's just. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> Uncross the legs. We're going to come into Bada Kanasana, so bring the soles of the feet. Yeah, high place. Exactly. To oh, get good it's Taj Mahal. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Molly's on this retreat. Yeah. 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 Did she come here looking for? Yeah. yeah. yeah she oh, she okay. was intentional. Her husband okay. wanted to buy something. Yeah. Nice. But that looks like they should just be in a booth. Like a, they should definitely yeah. be in house hunters. You know how they do the house hunters Oh, that's my Homes. favorite. Yeah. Yeah. They should be on it. Someone should film them doing this. That's crazy. Yeah. Alrighty, from here you're gonna just kind of this is this. You're just gonna cross over the ankles, make your way to a tabletop position. Having a mild stroke, it's okay. <laughs> As you inhale, you're gonna drop the belly, come into your cow pose, and then as you exhale, round out the belly, come into your cat. And then you're just gonna take a few more at your own pace. come into a neutral spine so from here we're going to take fire hydrants so you're going to keep your right hip underneath sorry your right knee underneath your right hip and then you're just going to take your left leg straight out to the side like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant inhale you're going to tap the left knee to the right exhale take it out to the side inhale tap it in exhale take it out just two more inhale exhale inhale exhale we're going to tap it in one more time exhale take it out this time you're going to extend the right leg off to the side maybe the sole of the foot can come to the floor and then you're going to walk the hips back towards the heel you should feel a nice big stretch on that inner left thigh unless of course you're much more flexible than me in which case you might not feel a whole pile of anything you can always feel free to play around with the position of that foot. So maybe it feels better for you to turn the toes up to the sky or move it in another direction. That's totally fine. And then you're going to come back up onto your hands and your right knee. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, you're going to lift that left leg off the floor, send it back behind you, and then take it underneath the hip. We do the same thing on the other side. So as you exhale, take that right knee off to the side. Inhale, tap it in. And just take four more, working to the pace of your breath. Inhale, tap it in. Exhale, take it out. This time, extend the right leg off to the right set the foot down and then start to walk the hips back towards the heels any amount. And come back up onto hands and knees lift the right foot send it nice and long behind you and then bring it back underneath the hip tuck under the toes send the hips all the way up and back into your downward facing dog 
can take a few moments to make any movements that you need to move, need to make. And then coming to stillness as you inhale, you're going to sweep the right leg up behind you. Exhale, you're going to shift forward, tap that right knee to the right elbow. You can always come down into a tabletop, lowering the left knee. Inhale, take it back up. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, take it back up. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. This time we're going to hold it here. Option to drop the left knee. You're going to take the right knee down to the right wrist. Exhale to the elbow. Inhale to the wrist. Exhale to the elbow. Just one more time. Inhale to the wrist. Exhale to the elbow. Send the right leg all the way up and back. And then bend the knee, send it up towards the sky, opening up through the right hip. Draw the right shoulder down in line with the left. Send the left heel down towards the ground, even though it doesn't have to touch. And then inhale, square off the hips, exhale, take the right foot down. As you inhale, sweep the left leg up behind you, exhale, shift it forward, option to drop the right knee, left elbow, left knee, inhale, send it back, exhale, knee to elbow, inhale, send it back, exhale, knee to elbow, feel free to drop the right knee, as you inhale, left knee to left wrist, Exhale, draw it up. Inhale down. Exhale, draw it up. One more time. Inhale down. Exhale, draw it up. Send it back to your three-legged dog. Open up the hip, sending the knee to the sky, drawing the left shoulder down. Inhale, square off the hips. Exhale, take that left leg down. Slowly start to walk yourself up to the backs of your wrists and then take a gentle bend in the knees, take opposite hand to opposite elbow and just let yourself ragdoll forward. Release the weight of the arms, let the tailbone drop towards the floor as you start to roll up the spine, stacking the spine all the way up to standing. We'll take a couple of sun salutations, so come to the top of your mat. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, step the right leg back, drop the knee. Exhale, plank or tabletop. Hold the breath, lower all the way to the belly. Inhale, peel the chest off for cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step the right leg forward, drop the left knee as you inhale. Exhale, fold at the top of the mat. Inhale, come to standing. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, left leg steps. Exhale, plank or tabletop. Hold the breath lower to the belly. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left leg steps. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, raise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, plank or table. Hold the breath lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, raise up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, plank or table. Hold the breath, lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, fold. Inhale, raise up. One more time on each side. Exhale, fold. Inhale, right leg steps. Exhale, plank or table. Hold the breath, lower to the belly. 
inhale cobra exhale down dog inhale right leg exhale fold inhale raise last time exhale fold inhale left leg exhale plank or table hold the breath lower down inhale cobra exhale downward dog inhale left leg exhale fold inhale raise up exhale hands to heart center we'll get the little balance ones out of the way first so shift your weight to the left you're going to bring the sole of the right foot either to the ankle the calf or the upper inner thigh for tree pose make sure you don't pop your left hip out to the side keep it hugging in towards the center line really engaging the glute and think of the right knee drawing towards the back of the room feel free to take your hands to the heart up and over the head wherever kind of feels good for you you can keep them on the hips if you like Step the right foot down, and we're just going to take it over to the other side. So, sole of the left foot comes up to anywhere on the leg except for directly over the knee, so either above or below the knee joint. Hug the right hip in and feel free to take your hands wherever is good for you. It's really windy, and that's why I'm going to blame my life balance and everyone else's. <laughs> Keep breathing nice, deep breaths. And bring the hands back down to your heart center. Release the left foot. Turn to face the long end of your mat and you're going to take a nice wide stance. Turn the right toes out parallel with the long end of the mat. The back foot turns in. Your front heel aligns with your back arch. Take the hands up to 90 degrees. Nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, take a deep bend into that front leg, warrior two. Make sure you can see your big toe on that front leg. And if your knee is coming way forward of your ankle, then I want you to take a little bit of a wider stance or a longer stance, sorry. Oh my God, Lindsay, I just realized I have the same shoe. Oh yeah? Yeah, I was just reading the back. I wouldn't have, reckoned, I wouldn't have noticed otherwise. Take one more inhale here. And then as you exhale, you're going to straighten out through that front leg. Walk the back foot in a little bit if you need to. Think of the right hip drawing all the way back and come into your triangle pose. Always feel free to take a block to the inside or the outside of the ankle if you need to. And think of lengthening the bottom side of your waist and your head is in line with your tailbone. So if you're curling forward, better to bring your hand up a little bit more on your shin. And take one more inhale and then as you exhale engage through your core come all the way back up and we're just going to take it to the other side so turn the right foot in the left foot out nice deep inhale and then as you exhale sink into your warrior two. Checking in with your alignment points, making sure we can see your toes. And then straighten out through the front leg, pop the back foot in a little bit if you need to, press that left hip back as you keep long through the left side of the body and then come down into your triangle. Trikonasana. Think of lengthening the lower back so the tail and the crown are moving away from you. Here. 
and then as you exhale, come all the way back up to stand. You take the hands to the hips and you're just going to heel toe the feet in towards each other. So we're going to break up the balance by doing things like that in between. So take the weight to the left foot. Your first option is to come back to tree. Otherwise, you can cross the right ankle over the left thigh and sink yourself back in to um, Ekapada Agni Stambhasana, which is just a really big fancy way of saying we're making a figure four while squatting. So, I'm going to give you the option, mostly aimed at Christina. <laughs> So you can hang out here in your hip opener. If you want to, you can always just sit down on the ground and do exactly the same thing. If you want to turn this into an arm balance, you're gonna bring the hands down to the floor. You're gonna shift forward into chaturanga arms. The, left, the right toes hook around the back of the left arm. Shift the shin onto the back of the arms and then the left foot comes in towards the glute. And then maybe it extends back behind you for Ekapada Galavasana. Ah, can you extend that leg? I'm scared. You got it. Yes, 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 yes. Engage the glute, engage the glute. Jeez, so close. Oh no. <laughs> Beautiful. And then we're going to come back up. If you're down on the floor, you're just going to switch it over towards the other side. Otherwise, you're going to come into your tree or you're going to cross that left ankle over the top of the right you're thigh the side. and sink back into your hip stretch. So hold it here for a couple of breaths. Option to hook the elbows over the fronts of the shins. And then if you want to try the arm balance on this side, shoulder distance apart. Use that left foot as a monkey tail around the back of the right tricep. And then think of pressing the floor away. So think of engaging like your back body in order to lift that right leg away from the back of the shin. So much you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. I have so much faith in you. <laughs> you! There you go. Yes! Nice! Beautiful. Woo. And then come back up to standing. If you're on the floor, I will give you an option to stay on the floor for the hip openness if you want to. Otherwise, you're going to take a nice wide stance on your mat. And we're going to turn the right toes out, the left toes in. And we're going to come back into Warrior 2. If you want to take this down to the floor, you're just going to turn it into a little baby hip opener. You still get a hip opener, it's just a little bit more chill. So, you can hang out here, otherwise we're going to take this into side angle pose. So just like you did in triangle, think of that right hip moving back. The right hand's either going to come to the inside, the outside, a block, or forearm to thigh. Option to reach that left hand up and over. Keep opening up through that chest like you're leaning up against the wall. Again, option if you want to take this down, you lower the back knee, it's a bit more of a hamstring stretch. You can stay here or we can take this up to balance, shifting the weight to the right foot and sending that left leg up towards the sky for Adha Chandrasana. Came up to your balance, slowly bend the right knee, set the left foot down. Everybody inhale, warrior two. Exhale, straighten out the front leg and take it over towards the other side. Take a nice deep inhale here. Exhale, come into your warrior two. And then shift that left hip back as you bring the left hand down to wherever it's going to come to. Making sure you can see that the left knee is facing directly forward and it's not collapsing in towards the midline. one more inhale here and then as you exhale come back up straighten out through the front leg pop the back foot in a little bit if you need to 
and make your way into your triangle pose. Option to hang out here, or you can start to bend through the left knee, hop that left hand forward underneath the shoulder, and karate chop the sky with your right leg, coming into Adho Chandrasana. Triangle will, will this hurt again. <laughs> here for moral support for the next five breaths. You're doing so well. That's how you can do it, Christina. If you, <laughs> you came up to your balance, you're going to set that right foot down. Everybody comes back up through center. Parallel the feet, take an inhale. And then as you exhale, take a wide-legged forward fold. So your hands can come to wherever is most comfortable for you. You can take big toes to, uh, sorry, peace fingers to big toes, hands underneath you. If you wanted to go upside down, you can oh, feel can free. You can feel free to do that. Do you want a spot? Oh, no, I think I'm there. Okay. Oh, that's so nice. And if you came upside down, you're slowly going to join the rest of us in your forward fold. Take an inhale, come into a halfway lift. This time as you exhale, you're going to turn the right toes out at a 45 degree angle. And you're just going to start to bend into the right knee. So we're coming into Skandasana. You can have blocks underneath your fingers if you want to. Those left toes can either be on the floor or you can point them up towards the sky. It really depends on the orientation of your hips and what's comfortable in your body. You can keep the hands on your block or on the floor or you can bring the hands up to heart center, maybe using that elbow to open up your chest a little bit. Take a peek down, make sure that your knee isn't projecting out beyond your ankle. That's what I'm trying to say there. Beautiful, and then we're just going to walk it all the way over to the other side. So turn those left toes out on an angle. You can stay up super high. Maybe your hands are on a block, or you can start to sink down a little bit lower into your skandasana. Option for the right toes to turn up towards the sky, or stay flat on the ground, wherever is the most comfortable for you. Yeah, yeah, you're okay. This is hard to tell from here. Like sometimes it looks like people's knees are doing all sorts of weird things, but yeah. it's, it's okay. And take one more breath here. And then as you exhale, you're just going to parallel the feet and come back into a wide leg forward fold. Again, option for whatever hand position you want to. If you want to take a handstand or anything here, you can feel free to do that. Headstand, handstand, potato, potato. And then walk the hands up underneath the um, shoulders. Hands to the hips, take an inhale, come all the way up to standing. And then as you exhale, you're just gonna turn to face the top of your mat. So you're gonna plant your right foot forward. You're gonna step your left foot back. This time you're heel to heel, so your stance is a little bit wider. Both hips are facing relatively forward. Start to bend into that right knee, coming into your warrior one. If this doesn't work on your back knee, you're just going to turn that left toe uh, heel up towards the sky, coming into a crescent lunge. Take one more breath here. As you exhale, you're going to interlace the fingers behind you. Inhale, open up through the chest. And then as you exhale, you're going to fold forward. So your right shoulder is going to come to the inside of your right leg. 
If that doesn't work in your body, then you're just going to fold more directly over the top of the right thigh. Hands can come up and overhead any amount that's comfortable for you. Feel free to keep them on the lower back. From here, you're just going to slowly release both of the hands to the inside of the right foot. Turn the left heel up. Option to set the back knee down if you want to. You can stay here in your lizard lunge or you can start to lift the back knee or you can start to come and um, bring the forearms down to the floor. You can do any combination of those things. You can have the forearms down and the knees down. Um, just kind of do what feels good for you. You can turn the toes out slightly. Again, it really just depends on the orientation of your hip. We're not doing that one yet. Oh, it feels so good though. I know it feels really oh. good. I know it feels good. But there are lots of muscles in your hip. From here, you're going to come back up onto your hands, lift the back knee if it was down, and you're just going to step the left foot up to the outside of the left hand, and we're going to come down into our malasana. So you can have a block underneath your hips if you need to. You can roll up your mat if you want to support your heels and come up a little bit higher. Try to use your muscles to open your knees as opposed to just getting your elbows in there and cranking your hips open. Sit nice and tall through the spine. We're going to take a few more breaths here. One more inhale. And then as you exhale, come into a forward fold. And you're just going to heel toe the feet back to hips distance apart. Inhale, come into a halfway lift and lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, roll all the way up the spine. Sweep the arms up and overhead. And then exhale, bring the hands back through the heart. This time, ground down through the left foot. Step the right foot back. It turns in on an angle, your heel to heel. Both hips face forward. Take an inhale. And then as you exhale, start to bend into that left leg making sure you lengthen your stance if you need to. And your hips won't exactly square forward, you're just working them in that general direction. So the back leg hip will always be back a little bit and that's okay, you don't want to crank on your knee, but you're aiming towards the front. Feel free to take the hands wherever you want to. Take one more inhale. And then as you exhale, you're going to interlace the hands the weird way behind the back. Inhale, open the chest. And then as you exhale, you're going to fold forward either to the inside of that left knee or bringing the torso more directly on top of the thigh. Depends on how open your hips are. And from here, you're just going to release both hands to the inside of the left foot. Heel toe the left foot off to the side. Turn the right heel up. Option to keep the knee lifted. Option to drop it. Maybe bring the forearms down. You can always have the forearms on a block. If your forearms are down, try and get as much weight through the left forearm as you do through the right. The tendency is going to want to be to press into the opposite arm to the leg that's forward. See if you can get an even weight through both sides harder than it should be. And then from here, you're gonna plant those hands down. Step the right foot to the outside of the left. We're coming back into our yogi squat. You can stay here, or if you wanted to try crow pose, then you're going to snuggle the insides of the knees to the backs of the arms, 
plant the hands shoulder distance apart, come up onto the tippy toes and start to teeter totter yourself forward. Maybe the toes lift, beautiful. And now you gotta jump back to Chaturanga. No, you totally don't. I'm gonna try, I can do it. Can, so you, I can. <laughs> can you do headstand from there? I've never tried. Do you wanna try? Sure. Okay. Are you guys comfy hanging out there for a little bit? Just hang out if there. you're If you're happy there, otherwise you can come into Baddha Konasana or lying down on your back into Sukta Baddha Konasana. That's it. Squeeze those knees to the chest. going to meet back in our malasana. Take a nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, come into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift and lengthen. Exhale to fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Take a nice wide step on your mat again. Turn the toes out to about a 45 degree angle. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. And then as you exhale, we're going to come into our goddess squat. So make sure that the knees are facing the same direction as the toes. You can keep the hands at heart center, or you can bring the hands to the sides if you want a little bit more support here. I'm just going to take a few more breaths here. right toes out the left toes in so we're just going to add some um, shoulder openers into our hip openers so if you are feeling like you want to bring it down to the ground just let me know and I'll give you some options for that as well otherwise you're going to come into your warrior two legs right arm is going to come up and overhead left hand is going to reach behind the back and you're reaching for the bind if that doesn't work you're going to come here or you're going to hold on to your shirt or your ponytail if your hair is long enough. Keep drawing those frontal ribs back towards the pelvis. If it's working in your body, keep the arms as they are. You're just going to straighten out through the front leg and then exhale, send that right hip back. We're coming into a triangle pose. So this can get pretty intense on the shoulders, so just take it to wherever is comfortable for you. If you need to release the bind, please release the bind. Inhale, bring yourself back up. Exhale, release the hands, give them a little bit of a shake, and we're going to take it to the other side. So this time the left toes are going to turn out. The left arm is going to come behind and the right hand is going to come from underneath. One side will probably be different to the other and that's fine. And then you're going to bend into your warrior two legs. My hair is too long. comfortable keep the bind just straighten out through the front leg and then start to send that left hip back as you come forward keep opening up through the chest if the bind's not working please release and slowly come back up through center release through the hands Bring the feet in a little bit. Inhale, sweep the arms up and over the head. Exhale, relax down into your forward fold. Again, any option with the hands. If you want to interlace the hands behind the back, send them up and overhead to continue opening your shoulders. That is an option.
leading with the chest as you inhale, you're going to come all the way up. <coughs> and I'm just going to choke on my saliva. <laughs> and then we're going to turn the right toes out. So we just got a couple more standing things and then we'll bring it down. So turn those right toes out, inhale here, and then as you exhale, come into your warrior two. Option to stay here for this whole next bit. Option to drop that left knee down if you want to bring it down a little bit. Otherwise, we're going to come into our side angle. Maybe you take that left hand, wrap it behind the back, reaching for the inner right thigh. Maybe you stay here, or maybe you take that right hand, bring it underneath the right leg, reaching for the left hand. Do you want to take this to go to paradise? I can't do that. You can't do it. No. <laughs> it's, I know that little bit. <laughs> That's right. I can get it like where I can hold my knee. I just can't take it straight. Oh uh, yeah, no, I can't keep my legs straight. Uh, I don't have that. Yeah. Okay, if you want to take this further, so if you get tired here, then you're going to bring yourself down to the floor. That right knee is going to bend, the left leg's going to extend, and you're going to come into Janu Shasana. Otherwise, we're going to go into Bird of Paradise. So you're going to hop the left leg forward, balance on the left leg, and then bring the right knee up to standing. That's all right. I can't, yeah. I can't go any further than this. And then we're going to bring it down. And we are going to join everybody else on the floor. So turn to face that right leg. You're just going to hop that left leg in. Send it nice and long. Bring the sole of the right foot to the inner left thigh. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. And then exhale, fold forward into your Janu Shasana. I find it's quite nice if you bring the right hand to the outside of the left foot or leg. Just helps you get a little bit more rotation in through that lower back. And then you're slowly going to release it. You're going to plant down through the left foot and you're going to send the right leg back coming into a lunge. Just take a nice deep breath here, releasing out through the front of that right hip flexor. And then we're going to step the right foot up to meet the left. Inhale, come into a halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up and overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Last little standing bit, step yourself nice and long, and we're just going to take it to the other side. So turn those left toes out, send the arms up to 90, start in your warrior two, then make your way into your side angle. You can stay here, maybe the right hand wraps behind the lower back, or maybe that left hand can come underneath the left thigh, reaching for the bind. If you're coming down to the floor, you're just going to take the hands down to frame the left foot, send the right leg through and bring the sole of the left foot to the inner right thigh for Janu Shasana, folding forward. If you're coming to Bird of Paradise, you're going to keep your bind, pop that right foot in, come up onto the left toes and then ground down to the right leg. Woo! Coming up into Bird of Paradise. our bird of paradise just slowly bring the left foot down hop the right leg back and we'll meet everybody else in janu shashasana bringing the sole of the left foot to the inside and then taking left hand to the outside of the right leg or foot or ankle or somewhere in that general vicinity And then we're going to slowly release our hold on the foot. Plant down through the right foot. You're just going to snake yourself forward. Send that left leg back. Bring both hands to the inside of the right foot. We did this before. 
this time you're going to turn the right foot out on a 45 degree angle and maybe start to rotate to the outside edge of the right foot. You can stay here if this feels good, you can come down onto the forearms or if you want to, you can rotate to the outside of the left foot as well and start to send the right hand to the back of the room. So just do what feels the best in your hips. slowly you're going to rotate yourself back through center and we're just going to step the right leg back step the left leg forward and take it on the other side so turn those left toes out on an angle come to the outside edge of the left foot always the option to have the back knee down maybe you come down onto the forearms or maybe you come to the outside edge of both feet and send that left arm back And slowly release that left hand down you're going to step the right leg forward to meet the left take the hands behind you and we're just going to make our way onto our butt okay so we're going to take Gomukhasana so you're going to take the right heel and it's going to come by the left hip then you're going to take the left foot and you're going to cross it over by the right hip so ideally your knees are in a somewhat stacked position you can walk your feet super far away from you if you need to or you can bring them super close in kind of find where it feels the best for you and if this doesn't feel good on your knees you can take any cross-legged position you can stay here if you want to take a shoulder opener just like we did before you're going to take that right hand behind you left hand comes from underneath option if you can keep both sit bones on the ground to maybe start to fold yourself forward slowly release the grip on your hands so we're going to come into double pigeon from here so your left shin is going to come parallel with the front edge of the mat and this time you're going to stack the right uh, sorry right shins parallel left leg will come on top can't even get the only sides of my body right if this doesn't work in your body you can always take a block and pop it up underneath your knee Otherwise, you can keep that right shin parallel to the front end of your mat and just swing your left leg behind you, coming into single pigeon, if that feels better on your body. But wherever feels the most beneficial and the most comfortable for you, we're gonna hang out here for another five breaths or so. From here, if you're right, if you're in single pigeon, you're going to come back to the top of the mat. We're going to extend the right leg forward and we're going to take the left leg, either hand to foot and knee, or you can take the foot and the knee into the elbows. And we're just going to come into cradle the baby. definitely harder I think if you have longer limbs I have like really, really short limbs so like, they're all like one. they're really kind of close to me and they're kind of, advantage for being they're kind of easy. Stumpy. yeah <laughs> but I feel like people who have like really long limbs they struggle because there's just like so much limb to kind of <laughs> hold on to only one point for the alligator arm <laughs> little t-rex <Yeah>. arm <laughs> 
Beautiful. And then we're just going to release that and we're going to swap it over. So this time the left foot will be on the bottom. So left heel towards right hip. And then that right leg is going to come on top, stacking for Gomukhasana. If you just came into a simple cross-legged position, you're just going to change the cross of your legs. And then option to stay or right hand will come up from beneath. Left arm will go over. Maybe you reach for the bind, a towel, your shirt. Option if you can keep the sit bones on the ground to fold yourself forward. Fun fact, Gomukhasana means cow face pose. I'm not entirely sure how this looks like a cow's face, but... It's the ears, isn't it? Which part is the ears? I read. Oh no. Oh! That's what I think. It could be wrong. No, that would make sense. <laughs> yeah, that would it. make sense. Final All answer. these years, I've been wondering why this is called cow face pose. That would make sense. Well, you're welcome. There you go. You're going to slowly release that. So you're either going to come into single pigeon with the left shin parallel to the front of the mat or you're going to stack that right shin over the top of the left coming into double pigeon. So if you're in your single pigeon, your left leg doesn't have to be parallel. It can come in a little bit towards your hip. Do what feels the most kind of comfortable for you. single pigeon you're slowly going to walk yourself back forward and we're going to extend the left leg out in front of us and we're going to take a hold of the right leg either with the hands or you can bring the leg into the elbows and just rocking back and forward slowly going to release that foot so you can stay facing the way you are on the mat or you can come to face the long way of the mat depends how sensitive your heels are to the floor but we're going to take a wide legged forward fold so you're going to send the legs out to the corners of your mat or off your mat you can stay here sitting up nice and tall maybe the hands come behind you or you can start to crawl your fingers forward both your um, feet and your knees stay pointing up towards the um, up towards the floor, up towards the sky. So only coming forward as far as you can keep them in that direction. And then we're just going to start to walk the hands over towards the right foot. So you don't have to come all the way over. It's just as far as you can get keeping that left sit bone grounded on the floor. And then you're going to walk yourself all the way over to the left as far as you can, keeping that right sit bone grounded on the floor. back through center slowly start to walk the hands back towards you 
and take a hold underneath the knee. So you're just gonna shimmy those legs towards each other. And just like we did at the start of the class, we're just gonna do a couple of little hip waves to get some mobility back in through the joint, release out through the muscle. then coming back through center so you got a couple of options before we completely make our way onto our back you can either take your feet to about hips uh sorry mat distance apart take an inhale and then as you exhale you can just kind of come into a forward fold otherwise you can take your peace fingers hook them around your big toes make sure you've got enough room behind you come to balance just off the sit bones, extending the legs in front of you. And then maybe take a little bit of a rock back. And a little bit of a roll <laughs> So this one's, this one's kind of really fun, but it, it feels really nice on the back, I think. I can't get back up. <laughs> yeah, and it takes a little bit of core strength as well. And this is a really nice way to release the lower back. And if you're taking your rocks, you're going to take one more. And then we're all going to bend the knees, scoot towards the front of the mat, and roll all the way down onto the back. From here, you're going to plant the feet as if you're coming into bridge. You're going to cross the right ankle over the left knee. You can stay here, maybe threading the hands through to grab onto the left hamstring or the left shin or you can ground down through the left foot and bridge the hips up, letting the right knee fall open. I personally find this is a really nice way to open up the hip. if you came up here slowly gonna lower the hips down keep the ankle uh, sorry keep the legs crossed as they are you know draw them in towards you and then let the knees fall over towards the right so that right ankle is going to act as a little bit of an anchor on the left side and then you're drawing the left shoulder back down towards the floor slowly draw those knees back in towards the chest take the right foot down cross the left ankle over the right knee either reaching through for the shin or planting down through the right foot lifting the hips up and letting that left knee open slowly releasing the hips down if you took them up draw the knees in towards you keep the cross and then just let the knees fall over towards the left using that left ankle as a bit of an anchor on the right knee drawing the right shoulder down towards the floor And drawing yourself back in through center, giving the knees a hug in towards the chest, taking any other movements you feel like you need before you come into Shavasana. 
And then when you're ready, coming into your final resting position, whatever that looks like for you today, it might be different than yesterday. And letting the hands turn up towards the sky, wherever you are, or maybe taking the hands somewhere on the body, maybe the heart and the belly and feeling the breath. Wherever you are, take a nice deep inhale through the nose, hold it at the top. And then big open mouth exhale. Knowing that we often hold a lot of tension and emotion in through the hips and sometimes hip openers can bring up frustration or anger or um, sadness or any other emotion that you might be holding there. So just sitting with that and not judging yourself, not attaching to it. Just acknowledging whatever is coming up for you and letting it go. If you want to stay here longer, feel free. Otherwise, you're going to start to bring some movement back into your body, wiggling the fingers and the toes, and giving yourself a nice full body stretch. And when you're ready, slowly roll into one side, and making your way into a comfortable seated position. together at the forehead today as you go forward maybe clear in your thoughts to the word uh, to the mouth maybe calm in your words and to the heart maybe joyous within namaste, namaste.